broadcasting around the world from Washington, D.C. I'm Bart Chilton, and this is Martin Luther King Jr.'s Day. January 15th, it actually was his birthday, and were he alive today, nearly 50 years ago after his assassination in Memphis, in Memphis Tennessee, he'd be 88 years old. We'll have more on the good reverend later in the program, and Ashley Banks will also take a look at minority gains over the last 15 years. And coming up after some headlines, we'll talk retail numbers with Melissa Armo. Plus, Alex Mihalovich will talk about the debt trap for Canadians and the debt trap for U.S. consumers. And before we go, we'll head over to the National Museum of African American History. But first, let's get to the business of financial headlines. Ford has announced to increase their investment in electric cars to a total of $11 billion through 2022. Ford had previously committed to spending $4.5 billion through 2020 and redirected $400 million in development from conventional models to electric and hybrids. Ford currently features just one electric vehicle, the Focus, in its fleet, but the new investment is aimed at developing models that can carry the corporation's more well-known and exciting names, such as the Mustang. Ford hopes to be selling a lineup of 16 fully electric cars within five years, including an electric sports car called the Mach 1 by 2020. More power to them. The iconic automaker's announcement at the Detroit Auto Show is, is still just an effort to catch up with similar commitments from some of the competitors. Volkswagen, for example, is already committed to investing $40 billion in this area by 2022. GM plans to sell 40 electrified models by 2023, including 16 that are fully electric already. Delmar AG, which owns Mercedes-Benz, plans all electric vehicles by 2022. And Volvo plans to phase out gas-only cars by 2019. Good luck to them. Amazon's acquisition of Whole Foods is already boosting their online grocery delivery sales. Market watchers at one-click retail say sales for Amazon Fresh increased by 35% up $135 million for the last four months of 2017. Sales of Whole Foods 365 Everyday Value brand items contribute $11 million to that total. While the increase was significant, Amazon's total is still just a fraction established of the grocer's cut in the specialty market area. Kroger, for example, banked nearly $2 million, $2 billion rather, in sales for organic and, quote, natural foods. Albertsons competing brand registered $1 billion in that niche. Online sales still account for just 3% of the $800 billion total for grocery sales. Amazon Fresh is believed to have captured $350 million of that total. Now let's talk retail and to do that, we have probably the best person around joining us, Melissa Armo, the founder of Stock Switch. That's such a cool name, Melissa. Thank you for joining Thank us. You. Let's start with Walmart. That's been in the news so much. Uh, they, they've been talking about their wage increases and then tried to sneak in the other day, downplaying that they're closing those 60 Sam's Club stores. What's going on, Melissa? Well, Walmart is just trying to compete, really, in this retail sector, which you know, Target raised their minimum wage last year in 2017. So Walmart's a little bit behind the eight ball with that. They're doing, they just announced it's gonna be $11 an hour for new employees, which is great. But yes, like you said, they did close, or they're going to be closing this month, a lot of Sam's stores. In fact, about 10,000 people are gonna be laid off, which is a lot. But I really think in the end, Walmart is trying to make a good decision here. The retail landscape is completely changing and it's not going to stop. These, the Walmarts, the Targets, the Coles, they've got to compete with Amazon, just like you were talking about, and they've got to cut corners where they can. And, and, and when you talk about stocks, I know you look at this stuff all the time. How are they doing compared to some of the competitors, competitors that you met? How is Walmart doing? Walmart's been doing great. Let me tell you something. It has been a bullish market, but Walmart has surpassed all expectations in the last year. If you look at the stock, one year ago this month, January 2017, it was around $69 a share. 
and Friday it closed over $100 a share, which even in a bullish market, that is a massive jump for the stock. It's over 40%. It's almost 50%. So, 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 why, so Melissa, why are, if, if, if their stock's up 40%, why are they closing 60 stores? What, what sneaky strategy is that? Because here's the thing, it's, like I said, the retail landscape is changing and Walmart's seeing that it's not just about price. At these types of discounted stores, which really Sam's Club, I mean, I don't know if you've ever been to Sam's Club, Barb, mm -hmm, but sure. Sam's Club is about discount in bulk, okay? So they're just trying to compete. It's not just price anymore with these discounted stores. It's about speed of delivery when you can get what you need, what you want. And so that's, you know, that's the thing. You still got to drive to a Sam's Club to get whatever you need. Whereas Walmart, and, and you know, they've got to compete more online with Amazon and Target. Now, what about some of those retailers that, that aren't, don't have those great stock numbers? Uh, we talked before about Sears and Pennies. Uh, they're having a tough time. Are, are, are they going to be making it? They've been having a tough time for years. In fact, I was looking at those charts earlier today. You know, J.C. Penney and Sears had strong years 11 years ago, 2007. They have not been able to recover. They have had steep drop-offs. The stocks are around four dollars a share for J.C. Penney and around three something for Sears. If they can't recover with this, with the new corporate tax cuts this year in 2018 because of Trump, if they can't recover in this period, I, I don't, I don't know if they'll ever come back. You know, I mean, now's their time. It's either make it or break it now for some of these retailers that really are struggling. And, and, and again, going back to Walmart, they're trying to make good decisions. They're trying to get ahead of it. Their stock's performing. They want to keep it up. Do you know what I'm saying? And these stocks that are not doing good, they've got to get going here. They've got to take advantage of this opportunity. But it goes back to, again, the online stuff. You know, if you can buy something online at Amazon versus J.C. Penny, and you got to go into the store, you know, big the big difference there. Hey, uh, big Melissa, difference. what about what about the millennials in retail? I mean, as they're starting families, are are they really going to help retail in any significant fashion? Is there something that maybe we can sort of cross our fingers for with retail? Well, you know, millennials love online. You know, they love watching movies and TV shows on the internet. Everybody's got their iPhones now. That's where people do their shopping on apps. You know, that's one of the reasons that Amazon has done so well, too. So obviously those consumers, they were, they were buying things, but as they a little bit older and start to make more money and have families and need other products and services, they may be going to some of these other places to buy things. Another good retailer is Overstock.com. That's a good place that people can go to, and that is an online retailer. No brick and mortar stores, and that stock has been flying as well. So millennials will look to buy things from Amazon, Overstock.com, places like that when they're having babies. Yeah, families, you know, like I, I, I get that whole thing. I just, I just wondered about, uh, particularly when you said the overstock thing. You know, there are certain things that you know you really want to touch and feel, right? I mean, a, a, a mattress for a baby's crib, etc. And that you know, you know, it's really difficult to do those, those online. We want to have you back and talk about any prognostications. So I'll warn you now, Melissa, uh, about <laughs> what's going to happen in the future. But we're out of time now. Melissa Armo, founder well, of the coolest sounding me. stock swoosh. Thanks always for your time and expertise. Thanks. Have a great day. See ya. And time now.